Welcome to the Zeres Shemesh in England podcast, in which we learn and explain in a clear and uncomplicated manner an excerpt from the Sefer Zeres Shemesh on the Parsha. The author, Hav Shemesh Nachmeni, lived about 300 years ago at the time of the Orachayim HaKadosh. And the, the, the Chidor describes him as a great Kabbalist. The author had one child who died in his lifetime, hence the name, Zeresh Shimshin. And in the preface to the Sefer, he gives, he gives a promise to people who learn his Torah. And your eyes will see children and grandchildren like the offshoots of an olive tree around your table, wise and understanding, with houses filled with all manner of good things and wealth and honor. Pasha's Bullock. It is written in this week's Pasha. So now, please come for me, for it is too powerful for me. Perhaps I will be able to reduce them and drive them from the land. For I, Bullock, know whoever you bless is blessed, and whoever you curse will be cursed. The so Egyptian asks, What did Bullock mean when he said to Bilam, Whoever you bless is blessed? Bullock only wanted Bilaam to curse B'nai Israel. Bullock was not interested in Bilaam blessing B'nai Israel. Why then did he mention, whoever you bless is blessed? So Shimshin answers by first asking another question. Pekei Ovos describes Bilaam as one with an Ein Ra. He was stingy. And the Zoya Kodesh explains the Posuk do not eat from a stingy man's food means that one should not ask a bracha from someone who is stingy, because the bracha of one who is stingy will not be fulfilled. This being so, how can it be that Bullock said, I know every you bless is blessed, since Bilaam was stingy, and a stingy person's bracha is not at all effective? Zeva so should answer this question in light of the Sefer covered Chachomim, that Bilaam not only knew the time that Hashem was very angry and his curse would surely be affected at that time, but he also knew when it is in Ezeratzayim, a time of favor, when Hashem is very merciful, and also the times in between, when Hashem is not totally angry, but it is not in Ezeratzayim. The Zohar that teaches us that a stingy person bracha is not affected is referring to regular times. However, when it is an Ezerot sign, even a stingy person's bracha is effective. Since Bilaam was able to detect when it was an Ezerot sign, his bracha were able to take hold even though he was stingy. Rashi quotes Chazal that Bolak was a greater sorcerer than Bilaam. Zeresh Shimshin adds that Bolak had a premonition that Hashem will not be angry with Bnei Israel in their future. And as a result of this, it would seem that any curse that Bilaam will utter will be totally worthless. Bolak therefore mentioned to Bilaam, whoever you bless is blessed, to tell Bilaam, even though you are very stingy, your brachas are effective, because you not only know the time that Hashem is angry, but you can also detect when it is in Ezeratzai and you give effective blessings at that time. Therefore, it must be that you can also sense a time when Hashem is mildly angry. Therefore, I'm asking you to utilize that time to at least mildly curse B'nai Israel, even if you can't give them a severe curse, since I know that Hashem will not be angry in the near future. This explanation explains another difficulty in the Posuk. According to Rashi, Bolik asked Bilim to make them less. Why did he not ask Bilaam to totally destroy B'nai Israel and not just make them less? The answer is like we just said, that Bolek, who himself was a sorcerer, knew that Hashem would not be very angry in the near future. And therefore, a curse to totally destroy B'nai Israel was not an option. Bolek therefore asked Bilaam to mildly curse B'nai Israel because he knew that Hashem would be at least mildly upset with B'nai Israel. Zeru Shimshin also gives a second explanation why Bolig mentioned to Bilim that he has the power to bless people, even though he had no intention to bless them. It was the base of a Kalva Choymer. 
Bolek told Bilim that even though you are stingy, and this should prevent your brachas from taking effect, still your brachas are effective. All the more so your curses should be effective, since there is nothing in your character traits that prevents it. So Shusha asks another question on the Posuk. When Bolik mentions that Bilam is capable of blessing people, it is written, the ones you bless are blessed, present tense. On the other hand, when Bolik mentions that Bilam has the power to curse people, it is written, the ones who you curse will be cursed, future tense. What is the reason for this change? The Rishimshin answers in light of Rashi's commentary in Pasha Shmois. It is written there, and Hashem said further to him, Now put your hand into your chest. And he put his hand into his chest, and he took it out, and behold, his hand was leprous, like snow. It is written in the next Pasuk, and Hashem said to Moshe, Put your hand back into your chest. And he put his hand back into his chest. And when he took it out of his chest, it had become again like the rest of his flesh. Rashi asks, in the first portion, when it describes how Moshe's hand became leprous, it says, he took it out and behold, his hand was leprous like snow. This implies that his hand became leprous only after he moved it from his chest. However, it says in the second Pasuk, when Moshe put his hand into his chest to be healed, when he took it out of his chest, it had become again like the rest of his flesh. The word had implies that Moshe's hand healed when it was still on his chest and not only after he had removed it. Why the change? Rashi answers, from here we learn the divine measure of good comes quicker than the measure of retribution. In the same fashion, explains Eri Shimshin, we can understand the change of tenses in our posuk. The brachas of Bilam took effect immediately, but the curses took more time to take effect because the divine measure of good comes quicker than the measure of retribution.